have reached rest grace with rwgresearch.com. Open dash source dash energy. Crap. <laughs> Welcome to the shop where things never stop. Video series. RWG OSD. Oversized Delta. Footage recorded on January 9th, 2016. Hey, what's up everybody? Russ with rwgresearch.com here. Alright, so this is the wire EDM machine as you can see. Um, I'm going to basically run you through how I made the skate plates as I'm going to be calling them for the most part in the 3D printer build. Alright, so uh, briefly I wanted to discuss what this machine is. This is a wire EDM machine, electrical discharge machining. It's a non-contact machining and basically the interesting thing is, is as long as the material is conductive you can cut it and you can cut it without actually touching it which means you could cut very thin material very precisely so I want to show you what is really going on here so under this cover is a nice spool of 0 0.05 millimeter brass wire and it is basically fed through this machine up through these rollers it runs through a switch here so it knows it's not broken it also runs through a cleaning pad which uh, wipes any dirt off comes around here to the ceramic wheel which actually grabs it this is actually what moves the wire and then another wheel there's a laser here which is also a sensing device as well as another guide so that we know it's not broken the machine knows it's not broken um, and then it runs down into this what they call an AT automatic threader uh, and this also can pop open there's a couple rollers in here pinch rollers and the guides uh, a cutoff this is an electrical uh, cutoff so that if you want to break the wire it actually breaks the wire through high current and a couple more rollers and then there's a uh, a ceramic nozzle it's actually an alumina ceramic nozzle which comes through out through the bottom and then on the back side of the machine where the wire is actually disposed of it comes out looking like this and you can see, I don't know if you can see the difference in color. This is probably, well, that's actually been used. There's a fresh piece. Fresh piece of wire right here. And this is the used wire. You can see how dull it is. That's because it's actually being burned away very slightly. And uh, that is actually how the machine cuts. So first thing we did is we used a program called Google SketchUp. Nowadays, it's not Google SketchUp, it's SketchUp Make. In that program, I just basically laid out the basic hole pattern where I wanted to put the holes and stuff. And then using a different software, which is called BobCam. Um, it's, a, it's an okay software. It's basically a software designed for different types of CNC machining. So since I'm going to be using a wire EDM machine, this worked just fine for my application because that's what it's used for. you got to basically draw the part and then trace you pick select the lines at which you want the cut to be then you program everything to do different styles of cutting you want it to be flush you want it to come in at an angle how precise do you want it to be do you want to come back and skim it a few times to make it even more precise and then after that you basically export it and it turns it into a .cn file which is basically a g-code file so it's identical to what the 3D printers is running except this G-code is formatted for this machine. All right, transferring via flash drive. Let's go. Program's good. I'm happy. It's happy. Every once in a while it can be tricky to get the code just right, but it looks like uh, we did a good job. So now we're going to set it up and get ready for the cut. This is my template. I cut it out of paper to scale just to find out exactly where I want to lay this without guessing too much, make my life a little bit easier. So we'll mount this plate in there 
and we'll do a dry run and make sure everything lines up correctly and see what happens. Oh, before I do that, I'm gonna rough the edges off because this is an ionized, an iodized piece of aluminum and it's non-conductive. The material must be conductive for it to actually cut. So I'm gonna clean these edges off so we don't have any troubles with that. Should be good, recycled aluminum off of something I took apart at one time. Got some measurements. This was actually a film camera plate for uh, high-tech film back in the 90s. About a $50,000 machine, I tore it apart. I've been using scrap for years. I'm gonna remove the edge off of this plate. It's black right now. Hopefully we don't have black when we're done. So, first thing I need to figure out is how to not lose my template. Let me grab it. All right, so I want to be able to cut three of these efficiently. So what we will do is just sort of mock them up using a pencil, lightly sketch. Pencil with lead, that is. So, just using a pencil, just sort of gonna lightly mark out the maximum dimensions on here so I can make sure I can fit several of these. You always want to get the maximum potential out of your material, so this is a good way of doing it. Okay, so we're going to probably end up cutting this piece off because we really don't have much room to work in this machine. It's kind of small. Um, and so we'll just cut this off so we have a little easier piece to work with. We're going to try to use one of these cutoff wheels, but it's aluminum, so it might not work the best. Let's give it a shot. Uh, it cut all the way through better than I intended, so that's great. We'll cut this one. Slam, bam, you know the rest. Lightly clean up this edge so uh, we don't have to worry about it sticking past the table on our CNC EDM. Ooh, pretty touchy-feely. I'm going to rough this edge off too so that we don't have to worry about that coating also on this side. All right, so we'll try this disc. It seemed to cut well, so it should take this finish off a little faster. Cool bean. According to my drawing, we're gonna be coming into the sort of top point right there. So which will be about right here, approximately. And uh, I just wanna be able to make sure I use up my material wisely, so. I think I'm actually going to start to cut like this, which will be the best. There's a hole here in this plate, which I'll need to uh, not cut. I want to go and make sure the plate is fresh and new. No holes or anything, because this is recycled material. I like to do everything recycled material. So I'm just going to mark this. And uh, what we're going to do is get the tool here, the wire lined up with this, do a dry run and then we'll uh, attempt to machine this and see how it turns out. First, we're gonna clamp the plate down though. Okay, so um, because this machine is so delicate with uh, how it cuts, it's actually non-conductive or non-contact machining. So tightening, tightening these uh, holders down with my thumb is actually enough to hold this plate in place, but we won't trust that. We'll go ahead and give it a little snug tight with the tool, but that's uh, pretty interesting because it will it won't move even with that slight hand tidy because the, the wire that's being uh, that's cutting this plate is actually not touching it 
the material is being removed with a electrical discharge between the wire and the part, which is pretty cool. Really, really cool. Okay, so right now, my table is orientated this way according to my plate. So what I can do is actually turn the entire axis at a 90 degree angle here and that will allow me to cut this plate at the orientation that I have it. I can do any angle in between, but I'm just going to do 90 because I got my plate aligned fairly straight on that direction. Okay, I'm going to rotate the table right here. So using a axis rotation, we are basically going to rotate the entire table at a 90, at a 90. There we go. Now when we go back to uh, look at our piece and check it again, hopefully this guy will rotate. Or the table will, we'll see. Okay, there we go. So we're off the table. You can see the... Uh, whole table here, we're off the table. So we'll just need to move our, uh, our piece around until we get it where we want it. What I'm doing right now is just getting this tool positioned in the right spot according to my light sketch on the plate from my template. And I'm going to do what they call a dry run. A dry run is basically letting the machine operate the whole path without cutting anything. And that will make sure that uh, everything is going to basically work correctly and do its job. So let's give that a shot. So we're here, and what we're going to do is do a, what they call dry run, and we're going to lock the machine. We don't want the machine to do anything. Okay, before I start, I'm just going to set everything to zero here. Uh, and the reason I'm going to do that is this will basically set the machine to zero. moving the uh, head down to a little bit more close approximation and then I will also reset this one all right so we're all set at zero this is going to be my new uh, relative home position and uh, now we can start the actual dry run all right so hitting start and this will start the process what we're doing is doing a dry run like I mentioned. We're going to make sure that the head doesn't hit anything in here, tolerances look fine, we're all okay there. Um, as you can see, the little red arrow here and the numbers changing, we're going to be following this template that I made. And I'm going to speed this up because this is actual run speed, which is relatively slow. So we will actually put the, uh, the feed rate at 10 and now it's going to go really fast so you can actually see the machine here it's actually moving around doing its uh, preliminary test cut and basically it's going to be running through the process without cutting anything I want to make sure that everything works well before I start cutting because once you start cutting you can't really just stop and restart without getting out things off because this is a very precise machine down to the uh, one two three four fifth decimal place to the right of the decimal place so the dry run worked great now we're gonna actually uh, let the machine do what it's supposed to do and cut this plate we'll reset everything back to zero and get it home feed the wire we're gonna turn the Machine lock off, dry run off. We're going to move. Right now we're at the last state the machine was in. So we're actually going to move this 0 0.039 three997. Since it's negative, we're going to go positive. Uh, that's in the x-direct axis. So in the y, we're going to be going the opposite. Negative 0.19. 838 eight. and we're going to start this and this position will end up back at zero if I did it right. So we're back where we started and um, basically 
reset everything and let the machine actually cut the material. Uh, I'm going to insert the wire. Uh, that's the wire collect. Insert the wire. And uh, this might splash. So the wire is feeding. I don't know if you can see that jet, that water jet down there. Okay, so you can see that wire in there. That little bitty tiny half a millimeter brass wire is what's going to be doing the cutting. I'll show you actually real quickly how it comes through the machine so you can get a visual of that. Okay, we're going to start, we're going to start the cut. The wire has been fed. The machine is ready to go. We have turned off all of the dry run capabilities and the machine lock. So we're basically going to hit this start button and hopefully right. the machine does its job. The tank is going to fill up because everything must be under water to remove particles from the actual uh, machining process as well as to keep the, um, <clears throat> well that's the main reason actually. This water is actually processed so it's highly unconductive. The plate that you see here is tied to ground or zero potential and the wire is tied to a uh, positive voltage potential. The water is, is highly non-conductive. It's treated through uh, a filter system behind the machine here, and it is, it is highly unconductive. It is designed to not conduct, because you want the conductive portion to happen between the wire and the aluminum. Okay, so you can see the ripples in the water. That tells me the jet is running. And the system will start feeding in right now, and there it's actually cutting. You can see the cutting happening. That is actually removing material through an electrical discharge. It is hard to see because it's under this water, but uh, you'll see exactly when we're done what I'm referring to. It's cutting it quite fast. Actually, I'm quite pleased with that. All right, you can see our numbers are moving, the machine is moving, the table's moving, uh, and our red uh, indicator here is actually where the wire is at this exact moment in the cut. Um, so if you want, you can actually watch the wire feed spooling and feeding into the machine and it'll be spitting out the backside if you want to have a look at that. As it goes in, it's nice and fresh and new, and as it comes out, it's all burnt because it's actually discharging electricity and burning the wire, removing material along with it. Okay, so just to give you guys a quick idea, um, this machine runs off of G-code, which we created in the Bobcam software, which we saw earlier. Um, let me turn this on. And basically, these are coordinates, X, Y, I, and J. X and Y are actually X and Y coordinates. The I and J are for the uh, radiuses that we're cutting right here. So as soon as this point gets around to the flat spot here, which is actually another radius, then you'll see that this line of code will jump to the next line of code and then it'll be following that arc until it finishes. It's pretty cool because it's not a point to point to point. You can actually do arcs, which makes the G code much shorter and easier to work with. And then here's the actual live position of the machine. This is where it's at. They're just switched. So that's how, uh, that's how what you're viewing here. Then you've also got voltages and currents, uh, different options, uh, feed rate, the wire feed rate, and a few other things to help you uh, get the machine set up correctly. Just finished. So we will stop it because, oh look, it fell out completely. Good, perfect. So we're gonna drain the tank and we will uh, remove our part and see what it looks like. Yeah, it worked, it's missing. <laughs> gonna dig it out of the bottom. It's usually always up in the corner. See if I can get it. There it is. So there is our beautifully cut black anodized aluminum plate. Now, now we'll machine on the uh, milling machine to finish all the holes and such. You could do holes on here, but um, it, then you have to pre-drill them and it just it, for this piece, it's not necessary. And how do you know for sure if it cut it correctly? We could uh, measure it, spec it out, but uh, 
this is just a rough out edge cutting and I'm perfectly okay with uh, with it not being exactly perfect but it it is I can tell you I can tell you it's correct because I watched the machine run told it where to go it went there cut now we're done okay there is the excess plate that I cut it out of looks pretty cool clean cuts man clean so I'm gonna spare you guys the time uh, basically I'm just drilling all the holes using an end mill for the drilling purposes uh, this end mill does have a center cut so beware some end mills do not have center cuts so I'm saving you the time here basically just running through the whole entire thing so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna yeah sparing you the time so anyway here are the plates and um, worked really really well they look clean they look nice they turned out really well perfect so now we're gonna do a deburring session the 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 most important tools that I have laying around here are probably deburring tools so this type of a deburring tool here is like a three pointed sphere that has just sharp edges around it so you can see how much deburring helps look how much I deburred off these guys so there are the plates they look beautiful finished absolutely beautiful and I will have to drill these holes to a different size later so some of them so here we are just assembling this guy testing a few things and uh, I'll give you a little sounds of the sliding so you can hear it so a few more adjustments here but um, seems to roll really well seems to work really well so I'm quite satisfied with that thus far alright so if you listen really closely you can hear this little tick 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 in this footage and that's actually due to the bearing the one I pressed in there funny remember I told you last time you ruined the bearings listen to it very closely that is actually what that little tick noise is so luckily I have one spare so no big concern here alright guys so I have been building this printer outside of work hours but for this particular day they wanted to do some filming so the reason that this footage is so nice and you guys I hope enjoyed it was that uh, there was actually a guy here that's doing a documentary for what we're doing here at my current research facility which is quantum gravity research so I'll leave some links in the descriptions. Make sure you go check out those other videos for my other research and what's being published over there. So the gentleman you see in holding the camera is actually our um, like director of um, media at the current time. And he does a really good job. He's putting together some really cool short edits of different things I've been working on here at the shop. So make sure you go check that out. And uh, stay safe. God bless. Have a good day. We'll see you guys later. Peace. But first, I must extract the last bit of caffeine out of this messy stuff they call coffee. Yeah. You know, I don't really like, I like the water. I don't really like the brown, but I like the caffeine. Cheers. Just keep your face unnaturally close to it, though. Unnaturally? Yeah, it looks good on camera even if it feels weird to you, not that close. <laughs> you are filming my cameras, but I am recording my audio. Maybe you'll find it. Maybe you won't. Maybe there'll be cheeseburgers in paradise. Ba da 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 da